Hi everyone and a very, very warm welcome to this Facebook Live with Ariana Huffington. Uh, as you all of you know, Ariana is the founder of uh, Thrive Global. She is the former editor-in-chief and founder of Huffington Post and uh, one of the most influential and more powerful women, not only in media but as well in business. So Ariana, very, very warm welcome and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Thank you. So what we wanted to do today with you, Ariana, is to reflect a little bit about uh, your journey and what prompted you to uh, star Thrive Global and some of the learnings and some of the milestones yes. that you have achieved in that journey of making uh, wellness something that it's not only driving uh, individual performance but also helping organizations find a new way of redefining performance. So tell us a little bit about what prompted you and what some of the personal experience that took you to Thrive Global. Well, what prompted me was actually a painful wake-up call, as very often is the case. Yeah. I, um, I collapsed from burnout, sleep deprivation, and exhaustion um, in 2007, two years into building the Huffington Post, being a divorced mother of two daughters, so teenage daughters at the time. And that was what started me studying the latest science and understanding, you know, the delusion that we're all living under, that in order to succeed, we have to burn out. So I started covering these issues at the Huffington Post. I wrote two books about them, Thrive and The Sleep Revolution, specifically about sleep. And then, uh, two years ago, I decided that, that wasn't enough. Yeah that I actually want to devote 100% of my life to helping individuals and organizations take the small steps that we call micro steps that thrive to change behavior and see the outcomes, both in terms of performance and in terms of health and in terms of happiness. So tell us about um, some of that, maybe some of the shocking data that helped you build a business case for importance of wellness? Yes. Well, in India, let's look at the data yeah. in, in, in India. You know, over 80% of people say they are stressed. Um, over 60% of uh, people in their 20s are suffering from some form of depression or anxiety. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now is that the cumulative stress in people's lives compounded by our addiction to our phones and technology and social media and games has made it easier for people to see that this, this is not sustainable, yeah. that something has to change. And what we're doing at Thrive is really both uh, work with companies to help them change their culture and see the impact on the bottom line, but also a media platform that brings together the latest um, science, new role models of successful people who are actually um, br bringing these small changes in their lives and seeing the impact on their productivity. Yeah. Yeah. Can you share some example of uh, how shifting beliefs drives shifting of behavior? And, and some of maybe the, your favorite examples of um, you know, some of those stories. Well, let me start with my favorite micro step. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, my favorite micro step is based on the assumption that there is nobody who has a, any kind of interesting job who can say at the end of the day, I've done absolutely everything I could have done that day. So people need to declare a kind of end to their day. It's yeah. an arbitrary end to their day. And the micro step is to declare that end to your day when you stop dealing with work and start working on recharging, which is work if people yeah. don't um, prioritize yeah. it. Yeah. So the way to um, declare that end of the day is to turn off your phone and charge it outside your bedroom. Yeah. This, is, uh, this seemingly is a very easy step. It's very hard for a lot of people. Very hard who are used to sleeping yeah. with their phones, yeah. and they think that's the way to be super productive, yeah. but it's not, because yeah. everybody needs a little time um, to really recharge fully and return to the day 
resilient and creative. Yeah, and I love what you said about uh, put your uh, declare the end of the day so you can keep working for the next day. Yes. So you, you're saying that even resting or taking care of your needs is part of... It's part of your work. Yeah. It's like, re it's like what they say on airplane, put your on airplanes, put your own oxygen mask on first yeah. and then you can take Help care of others. others. Because if you wake in the morning and you're exhausted, it's going to affect the quality of your work. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us some examples that you've seen, especially in the world of sports, um, and, and how sports can teach us that to really reach peak performance, you do need to take care of the self. Yes. Some, some very inspirational examples, maybe your favorite example of, of well, the world of sports. Uh, my favorite example is by Andre Udala, yeah. who is uh, um, a very successful um, part of the Golden State Warriors in San Francisco and also an investor actually in Thrive. And he has tracked very analytically his, uh, the connection between his performance on the court and how much time he had taken to sleep, um, eat right, meditate, whatever was his program, you can see the direct connection to the stats. So one of the barriers uh, we mentioned about the barrier of the individual um, to to turn off uh, the second barrier is the corporate barrier yes. while i think organizations have understood the importance of wellness uh, there is still a resistance mm -hmm. to to really invest in wellness what, what's your message for corporates to say well i think the message is that they should see investing in human capital yeah as critical to their business metrics and bottom line. That is not just a warm and fuzzy HR benefit. It's hardcore, incredibly important for performance. And that's, um, I think, the only way yeah. for people to change beliefs to yeah. your question earlier yeah. about how do you produce the most effective and, um, and productive um, business place. Yeah. How do you integrate that with the pressures of, you know, work and delivery, clients? Is there any creative way to integrate moments of, micro yes. moments of wellness at work? Well, I, th I love that you call them micro moments yeah. because they're micro moments. Yeah. Let's say you finished a very stressful meeting. Yeah. Take one minute, one minute to focus on your breathing, yeah. to deeply inhale and exhale. Um, to remember three things you're grateful for, to stand up and stretch. Whatever it is, you need kind of what they call a pattern interrupt. Otherwise, the cycle of stress gets worse and worse, and by the time you get home, you're too wired to sleep. A lot of people self-medicate, you know, drugs, alcohol. There's a really deep connection with the accumulated stress of the day. How do you make these micro moments uh, sustainable? So that's where our media platform comes in. Yeah. We have everything we do has a sustainability part yeah. because otherwise you don't have this re the, the long-term results. So we produce great content. You know, I come from the media world. Yeah. I have a great team coming from the media world. And the content we produce is compelling. People want to engage in it. It brings them the latest science, new role models, like if you're a millennial, we can feed you what Selena Gomez wrote for us about detoxing. If you're a businessman, we can feed you why Jeff Bezos believes he has to get enough sleep, yeah. otherwise it affects his decision making. So yeah. we personalize the yeah. content. Yeah. So that creates inspiration yes. for people to keep And permission, focused. you know to do something that yeah. seems still to go against the culture of stress. Yeah, yeah. So give, it, uh, give us an example on, and I love you said that uh, taking permission. Yes. So why do we need to take permission? Is it that we correlate burnout with success? Yes, Woman exactly. uh, wanting to multitask? Yeah, that's the key. That's why changing beliefs is so key because most people yeah. live under the belief. Yeah that burnout is the inevitable price of success. It's completely untrue, but a lot of people believe it. So tell us the uh, play with technology. You mentioned that yes. many of us can't uh, 
sleep without having the phone in the same bedroom, and, and, and that's a really a big challenge. Uh, but what is the opportunity that technology brings to help us live a better life as well? Well, yes, technology is neutral. It's yeah. how we use it. Yeah. And uh, there's now a whole movement called Tech for Good, yeah. you know, with meditation apps, with um, um, apps to track your sleep, your steps, etc. So there's the whole um, wellness-driven yeah. technology part. But I think the worst part of a lot of the apps that, and games that people are consumed with is the addictive nature. Yeah. And especially with social media, you see people who then become so addicted to validation, to the number of likes, and that ultimately is a very dangerous way to live. Yeah. So my last question, Arianna, uh, how do you measure your own success with this new movement? Because obviously it's something that, you know, it's very difficult to measure, and of course you're making a difference to many, many people who already are connected with Thrive, who have read your book, who are understanding and working with your teams already, trying to percolate that with the corporate. How, where, is, where is that journey taking you and how will you measure success of this? So for us, you know, we are very much a global company. Yeah. Launching in India was very important then, to me because I love the country. Congratulations. Thank you. And um, our, the goal for us is to reach millions of um, consumers yeah. through our media platform and work with um, hundreds of companies around the world on the specific human capital. Yeah. But I think working with the consumers is also extremely important to us. And then inviting everybody to follow us on yeah. here in India at Thrive IN is our Twitter account. Yeah. Instagram is um, a Thrive um, underscore um, India. And following me personally, Ariana Huff with two Fs, um, Instagram. And um, we would love to have you participate, send us your own stories. Yeah. Um, you can send them to me through my Instagram or Twitter, and we'll post them. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome, Mariana. Welcome so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Last final uh, advice to all of our viewers on one thing to start and to stop today. I would say absolutely. Please, please turn off your phone at the end of the day <laughs> and charge it outside your room. Start and stop at the same time. Yes. Well, welcome. Thank you Thank so you much, Arena. So Thank you and thanks everyone for joining us in this uh, fascinating conversation. I'll request the team to put all the information about Thrive Global uh, on the notes itself of Facebook Live, and I invite you all to follow Thrive and Ariadna's work. And uh, congratulations for the India launch. Thank you so and, uh, much. And it's such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.